we're back. I'm Nikki, and we are doing a show called Meet the Candidates, sponsored by Mr. Paul Herring. And guess who I have the pleasure of speaking with tonight? Who? Who? None other than Paul Herring. All right. How are you tonight, Paul? I'm doing great, Nikki. Thanks for having me on. Great, great. I know a lot of people already know a lot about you from doing the Juneteenth and other things in the community. Can you tell them a little bit about yourself? I was born in a log cabin. <laughs> No, I wasn't. I was born in Detroit, Michigan, actually, and spent most of the of my childhood there. Um, my family moved to a small New England town called Scituate, Massachusetts. Uh, we did about two and a half years there, and then we relocated to the Great White, also known as Grand Blank. Okay. Where I did my junior and senior year and got hooked on the farm. Wow. So you moved from Grand Blank to Flint, huh? Yeah, well, it was a, it was a, it was a natural transition. I started working in Flint. I got a little apartment in Flint, and I just slowly but surely stopped going. It's normally the other home. way around. You move from Flint to Grand Blanc, right, or from right. Flint to <laughs> Atlanta. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about your educational background? Yep, yep. I'm a graduate of Grand Blanc High School. I've attended Mott Community College as well as uh, the University of Flint. I'm undergreed, but I am a student of life. Um, okay. I've done so, so many things, mm -hmm. from uh, business opportunities to production companies. Uh, it's just been a wonderful ride. Okay. Some of us may know, we may not know. Can you let us know what ward you're running for? Yeah, I'm in the fifth ward. I've been in the fifth ward almost, wow, 30 years now. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was here when it wasn't as pretty as it is now. Okay. I'm a resident of Carriage Town. And I can remember moving into Carriage Town and asking prostitutes to move out of my driveway so that I could pull in. Okay, okay. Can you let the viewers know what geographical area the Fifth Ward is? The Fifth Ward is kind of screwy. It goes all the way down um, Saginaw Street, well, let's say Fenton Road, to Saginaw Street down by the old Feminine Healthcare Clinic or Planned Parenthood. Oh, yeah. Under okay. the Vidoc. Mm -hmm. And then it comes up the expressway, and I get uh, the east side of downtown. Mm -hmm. So the 501 and the Crepe Company and the Water Street Pavilion are in my ward. Then it follows Saginaw Street to Fifth Avenue, goes up Fifth Avenue to East Boulevard Drive, notches in for a little neighborhood over there, then squeezes close <laughs> and expands out on the east side, on the Minnesotas and the, the oh, really? Idaho's. Yeah, just about 10 blocks over there. Oh. And then comes back up and around and ends back downtown. Okay, okay. So we're here tonight to talk about you campaigning and becoming a Flint City Council member. Mm -hmm. Can you let our viewers know what your ideal of uh, that a Flint City Council person is? Well, you know, I've been videotaping and recording council meetings for over 25 years. So I've watched a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. And I have come to the conclusion that the role of a council person is, is the keeper of the budget. You know, it is their job to make sure. Say, for instance, that the, the administration wants to come and buy a garbage truck. And they send up something to council that says they want to spend $60,000 on a garbage truck. Well, my job as a councilman, right, is to go to the budget <laughs> and look at the line item for garbage trucks uh -huh. and see if there's sixty grand there. Right. If there's fifty grand there, I'm supposed to vote no. Mm-hmm. If there's seventy grand there or sixty one or sixty, mm -hmm. I'm supposed to vote yes. Mm -hmm. Because it's a budgeted expense. Right. So my job is, is is to watch the budget. And I know we have a little bit of input on the budget, but the administration is the one that generates the programs and the projects. Right. If you want to create jobs you got to get the mayor to want to create jobs. Mm -hmm. If you want to create <clears throat> business opportunities for uh, low-income people, you've got to get the mayor to put it in the budget. Mm -hmm. and, and then we can support it. Right. You, you touched on a couple of my next questions right there. Okay. Speaking of budget, mm -hmm. how do you feel about what's going on with the school budget, all of these schools closing? I'm not mad at it. I think, and, and, and understand this, that the school is a separate but connected entity to the city of Flint. As the schools go, so does the city. As the city goes, so does the school. If we can't provide employers with educated workforce, we're not going to get any jobs. So we really do have to be concerned about the school. We're not 200000 anymore. So logic dictates if you're not 200000 some things have to change. Mm -hmm. And it's unfortunate that all of them had to change this year. Right. When it could have been a, a slower process. We could have lost a school every two years. 
or we could have lost a school every three years. Mm -hmm. My thing is, I think all the schools should be in one location. Mm -hmm. It should be a general campus. Maybe we take the area over there where GM isn't anymore, mm -hmm. off of Hamilton Street. And we make a huge, beautiful, immaculate, super high-tech school. Mm -hmm. right. And you put Northern on the Northern side, and you put Southwestern on, on the, the Southwestern southwest side, side. Yeah. and the elementary schools in between. You use shared gyms and all that kind of stuff. Right. Let's spend $40 million mm -hmm. on one school. On one school, yeah. Because if we close eight of them, we got the $40 million to pay for this one because we're not giving it to consumers. Exactly. Right. We're paying for you know buildings from the 60s and the 50s that are just, just hemorrhaging mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. So that's my piece on that, and that's not even... In my preview All as a council right. right. I mean, I have no control over that. But mm -hmm. that would be my suggestion to the school board. Okay. And a few minutes ago, you mentioned mayor. That brings up my next question, okay. which I ask everybody. Mm -hmm. We have a Flint emergency manager in-house now. How does a city get into the shape where they have to bring in an emergency manager? Our council invited them in. Our city council wrote a letter to the state and said, we need your help. We can't do this. We did this to ourselves. Our elected officials did this to us. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, <laughs> I feel it's because they wouldn't, like the state said, they didn't have the political will to do the things necessary to put Flint back on the right track. Mm -hmm. Again, we've gone from 200000 to to 100000 mm -hmm. Has our city budget, have our employees in the city gone that way too? I don't know. I know that we just paid for two police chiefs. Mm -hmm. And one had a full time job in Detroit. How in does Detroit. that happen? How does that happen? How does that happen? Right. Okay. We've got an emergency manager that we're paying one hundred seventy, one hundred ninety thousand, when we couldn't afford the mayor we had at ninety thousand. Mm -hmm. Right. How does that happen? Mm -hmm. It's just it's. I like to say black ass words. <laughs> it's ridiculous. That's not how government's supposed to function. So we pretty much have a nineteen million dollar deficit <laughs> right now. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of that tie into that? You know, I would say that history would dictate that we would have had a $19 million deficit anyway. Mm -hmm. I'm just disgusted that the man that the governor has sent to stop that from happening didn't. Emergency, right. He didn't. You, <laughs> you, I mean, you've got all the tools available to you. I haven't seen him cancel one contract with Consumer Powers. I haven't seen him cancel a contract with Comcast. Mm -hmm. Okay? I haven't seen him renegotiate power rates for streetlights. I've seen him assess the city and the residents additional mm -hmm. money to pay for the streetlights. Mm -hmm. But did he sit down with consumers and say, hey, you're either going to have to cut our consumers' rates or we're going to cut off every other streetlight in the city? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, hear I don't know talking. that he didn't do that. Right. But it wasn't in the journal and it wasn't on Channel 12, so mm -hmm. I'm going to assume he didn't. Okay. Now that you have talked about a few of the issues that are, I'm pretty sure, some of the concerns of some of our citizens, let us know why you feel like you should be elected for fifth ward city councilman it's kind of like being on the highway and seeing a car accident you really i mean i really want to stop and help but sometimes momentum sometimes other things uh are more important at that time you know you got to get to work you got to pick up your wife or whatever and you can't necessarily pull over at that time right i've been on the highway for 25 years <laughs> I've been watching this wreck for 25 years, and I feel now it's time for me to step up and, and, and do some triage. Speaking of campaigning, where will your headquarters be? My headquarters? <laughs> <laughs> My headquarters will be on the top floor of the wonderful Herring Estate here at 405 University Avenue. Mm -hmm. It's a grassroots effort. Um, again, it's not wise and, and I say this in every election, I hear these guys are spending $8 million to get a job that pays $100,000. That's not frugal. If mm -mm. you're stupid enough to do that, what are you going to do when you get in office? So it doesn't make sense for somebody to spend $6,000, $7,000, $10,000 to get elected to a council seat that, that doesn't pay six grand. I was just reading, I did a little research so I'll know a little bit more about what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. That actually the city council's pay got cut. Oh, yeah, what was it this year, last year? I think yeah. theirs was an 80% cut and yeah. the mayor's was a 60% cut. Yeah. So we're still paying for councilmen that have been castrated. Mm -hmm. We're still paying for a mayor 
mm-hmm. that's been castrated. Mm-hmm. And we can't afford either. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to do it, just give them vacation. Let them go. Mm-hmm. That's just like Mr. Mays was saying that the council members are basically part-time, not full-time. Well, they've always been part-time. Even when they were getting the 21 and 22 and $23,000, it was a part-time job. Mm-hmm. You know, in Detroit, I was just listening to the news this morning. In Detroit, <laughs> the councilman's getting $225,000. City council? A city councilman. He had to he quit the council, and now he's working for the emergency manager. So I think he was getting ninety grand as a council person. And now he's getting 225 working for the emergency manager as a hatchet man. Wow, and we're getting, what, almost like 7000 here, if that? This, again, there's no role for council wow. in the emergency manager act. Mm-hmm. And the council brought this on themselves. You know, I think all but Neely and uh, Sargentson mm-hmm. voted to send that letter. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was, it was just ridiculously unproductive. Mm-hmm. But... They had their hands tied. They didn't feel that the administration was doing what they said they would do, and they were right. Right. So their only other option was either the uh, emergency manager or bankruptcy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I would opt for bankruptcy. Okay, okay. Because the bottom line is the emergency manager is here looking out for the bondholders. Mm-hmm. Doesn't care about the citizens, doesn't care about the unions, doesn't care about the contracts. My other concern is, is that he's selling off our assets like they're popcorn. And I have a prediction here. Uh Uh-oh. I bet within the next two years, either Mr. Kurtz or Mr. Brown are going to be CEOs at the Karagandi water plant. Oh, the one at the pipeline? Yeah, or they're going to be high-paid consultants with Republic Trash. You see, they they, they sold those assets, our assets, assets. to those companies for pennies on the dollar. Where they're going to get in. Pennies on the dollar. Mm -hmm. We just sent millions on garbage trucks. Millions on garbage trucks. Not five years ago. And they gave them away. Just they gave them away. It's an asset. I understand. The water. We generate revenue from the water. Mm-hmm. Taking that away. Mm-hmm. Atwood Stadium. So it didn't make a lot of money. It was a, a jewel. Mm, yes, it was. Giving it away. I think Kettering's going to be a good steward yes. of Atwood Stadium. So that might be one of the best moves we've made. Mm-hmm. The bottom line is that these are things that needed to happen. And they needed to happen 15 years ago. And they needed to happen 10 years ago. And they needed to happen 8 years ago. And unfortunately, they're going to need to happen 5 years from now. Right. We're a smaller city. We've got to get with that program and understand that that's what we are now. Mm-hmm. Now, as far as the water is concerned, at one time we had 7 water factories here. Right? Did we really have 7? Seven? 7. We had plants all over the place. They were using the existing water system. Mm-hmm. I remember the big Beecher Tower. They were using the existing water system. Yeah. Now they're gone. Wow. So nobody's using all that water. So there's more than ample water for industry to come back to Flint right. without this water line. We've got a treatment plant, a water treatment plant over there off Dort Highway that we just spent millions in. We're just this far away from being able to make it our main source of water. Mm-hmm. And they want to redirect that money. To folks that <coughs> aren't here. Right. There's no stipulation that they have to hire people from Flint. And even when there is, there's nobody to follow up. We fired our contract compliance guy 13 years ago. Wow. Mm-hmm. So who's who's watching who? Right, who's watching who? Who's watching who? Mm-hmm. People come up to council all the time asking for abatement, tax abatements. Mm-hmm. And they say, hey, you know, you don't give us tax abatements, we're going to move. Right. Mm-hmm. We'll move. Because the only ones you're employing is you, your uncle, your auntie, your cousin, and your nephew. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make sense. You're not doing anything for us. No, and if we give you this $10,000 tax abatement, now you're even taking more from us. Right. Well, we're going to hire more people. Well, where are they? Right. It's and we need later. the jobs. Right. We, we the guy said the that there's a $15 tax abatement coming. Don't give anybody a 15-year tax abatement. Give them a two-year tax abatement and a report card. Exactly. Two yeah. years, you go in and see how many people from Flint they've hired. And mm-hmm. if they've hired what they said they were, give them another two years. Mm-hmm. And so on and so forth. Mm-hmm. They did that with a Comcast contract, a 15-year contract. Ridiculous. You sound like you have a lot of fresh and brand new <laughs> ideas, which I am big on. Yeah. I know we had one guy in office. He's been in office for 30 years now. Yes. That's a problem. Yeah. I see that as a problem. That's a problem. Although he's the steward. I mean, he knows where the bodies are buried. It might be time for <laughs> something fresh and brand new. I mean, we're, we're doing the same thing over and over, and we're getting bigger and bigger and deeper and deeper. It is. But I really do hole. think that you need a historian. 
Mm -hmm. You need somebody that can can walk you through. You don't need to reinvent the wheel, mm -hmm. you know, and that's what most people would be coming in fresh. I can't believe that this many council people transfer out at the same time. Right, yeah. This is a big election. Mm -hmm. you know, it's going to wipe out three quarters of the knowledgeable council people. So if you get freshmen in there, they're going to have a learning curve. Regardless, oh, yeah. you know, whether it's six months, five months, four months, or a year, there's going to be a learning curve. And I don't think we should, we should lose that kind of time. Uh, our government's too important. So I think these elections should be staggered a little better. Okay, well, let's get back to the elections and your campaign. Mm -hmm. Why don't you let the people know why they should vote for you to be in Fifth Ward? You know, uh, people say that one of my, my biggest flaws is I oversimplify things. And I actually think it's one of my greatest weak, uh, strengths. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a weakness. I think things need to be simplified. The simpler you can make things, the easier things go, the less there are to break. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So I, I feel, and it's just no, I don't want to, I don't want to talk bad about the current council person. Mm -hmm. Because that's not what this is about. No, it's not. It's time for me to step up. It's time for me to make a difference. I can't criticize what's going on any longer and not try to fix it. Mm -hmm. You know, you can either be part of the problem or part of the solution. True that. And oh, my mother yeah. used to tell me, she said, lead, follow, or get out of the way. You better lead. <laughs> and I'm, I'm ready to lead. Mm -hmm. I'm ready to lead. Well, we're about to wrap it up here. Sorry, sorry to cut you short That's of okay. all people. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to say? I like to look at the camera and say, Ma, all the good I do is for you. All right. Thank you for coming out. You're welcome. All right. We'll be back in a moment. I have to cut you short. No. Ah, <laughs> took my time, didn't she? I heard the alarm go off. I know I was over. <laughs>